Right, today we are going to build a Halo IC Osiris. And this is my frame that I've put together and I've basically just screwed on the mortars and the mortars I'm using are the iFlight Zing 2207E. And the reason I'm using these particular mortars is because I got them for just over 30 quid for four um, from Banggood. And at that price, they were well worth testing. Um, they feel really, really smooth, um, but the magnets don't feel as strong as on the full bore, more expensive Zing. So we'll have to see what they're like. However, I'm not really concerned about all out performance because the idea of this guy for me will be it's going to be a cinematic or not cinematic but smooth freestyle quad and I'm not too interested in brute power. So we've got the frame itself, I've printed off um, TPU camera mounts, the frame does come with them. Um, I'm going to be using the DJI system in this build although of course you can use analog so I've printed off the bits that I want and of course you can get these with the frame from Halo RC and I've amended Bloods' antenna 3D print, or should I say Mark has my friend, to use um, basically GPS so we can fit in this new mount either the BN180 which you can get from Banggood or the TBS version, this guy which is pretty much identical just with a different sticker, TBS M8. So the components we're going to be using are the frame, the motors. We're going to be using a KISS V2 flight controller because everything I build at the moment is pretty much KISS because I love it so much. We're going to be using some Impulse Apex arm guards. And you don't have to use these. I just like them because um, they cover your motor wires nicely. Um, they're really robust, super light, and they fit on the arms of this frame perfectly. But you can just, you know, use some insulation tape or whatever. So we're going to be using that as well. ESC-wise, I've decided to use the 20x20 Speedex GS40, um, I think it is. GS40F. And the reason I'm going to be using this guy is because it not only is it supposed to be a really reliable 20x20 ESC but it has an F3 processor so I'll be able to use D-Shot 2400 on KISS V2 if I wish to do so. When you get your KISS flight controller if you don't have a stash of them already you need to buy um, the connector cable but we'll come on to that in the build and we're going to be using the DJI Air unit which I'll come on to later on. The one quirk that we need to talk about up front is if you're using BL Heli 32 ESCs with KISS, you have no pass-through like you would on Betaflight or KISS's own um, ESCs. And the reason why I'm still using this over the KISS ESCs is simply because KISS ESCs are very expensive and I have a habit of dying very quickly and the equivalent FESEC ESC has had quite a lot of deaths amongst, um, I've had one die myself and um, people I know have also lost quite a few. So I'm gonna play safe on this build and, uh, and use the Speedex. So a few things to say before we start. If you're building your first quad or you've not built before and you're terrified of this, don't be. Building quads is really, really easy. Just needs a bit of time and a bit of patience. The thing that everybody seems to be scared about is soldering. Soldering is about the easiest thing you're gonna do. You get a piece of solder and stick a hot soldering iron against it. It melts and that's how you attach your wires. There isn't a lot to it. The only thing that I would say is when you're dealing with large pads like this, apply the tip of your solder iron first to warm up the pad and then apply your solder. And when you're dealing with really small pads, put your solder against the pad first and then just lightly tap it with your, the tip of your soldering iron until um, you get the, the solder on the pad. It's as simple as that. By all means practice, but in all the things that go wrong in this hobby, 
soldering is not usually one of them. So whether you're a master solder, solderer or brand new to it, it's not something to worry about. And that is pretty much it. So what I've done just before I started this video is I've conformal coated this guy because it's horrible and wet in the UK, landing and crashing in mud and wet grass all the time. And while I wouldn't hang my coat on conformal coating, um, it just helps to stop unnecessary shorts. And the conformal coating that I'm using is just some cheap MG, chemi MG chemicals. Um, it's not a silicone one. Um, it's an acrylic one, which is not the best, but it's super cheap. It's about four quid on Amazon and it'll do me absolutely fine. If you can find it cheap or you have a huge budget, the, the MG Chemicals silicon based conformal coating is better because it has a little bit of flexibility in it so it won't crack as easily. Um, but when I was looking, it was sort of 15 quid a bottle versus four quid. So it was an easy decision for me. The ESC comes with little built-in blue gummies and it comes with some hard plastic sort of spacers and it comes in two lengths none of which fitted this particular build so all I've done is use my um, clippers to cut them down to the size I want and all I'm going to do is basically sit the flight controller on here this way around should I say and solder obviously the motor wires to it but before we do that what I want to do is add an XT60 connector to it and I've found one already made this guy is using 16 gauge wire you can use 14 if you prefer personally I've always used 16 never had any issues on 6s and it just means that the wire is a lot more flexible and easier to use so first job is I'm just going to get this guy in place where I want it to be, make sure everything's all okay and then solder the XT60 wire onto the ESC. The other thing that we need to factor in on this particular build is that the KISS V2 flight controller is a 30 by 30 mount and this guy is 20 by 20 so like I ended up on my previous build I've just printed off spaces basically which allow um, us to attach these guys to the ESC on the 20 by 20 holes and then KISS on its 30 by 30 will just attach on the outside. And if you've got a 3D printer these are really nice actually I like them a lot. If you haven't got a 3D printer you can just buy a 30 by uh, 20 by 20 but a 30 by 30 converter and you'll end up with something like that etc which you can use um, just the same. So I've just sat the ESC onto the frame and you can see if I just push the screws that I'm using up I've just left myself about sort of 5mm or so head free and that's enough for me to mount the, the uh, TPU converter on so that's absolutely fine I'm not worried about the direction of the ESC whether motor one is here or there or whatever because it's really simple just to change the wire connectors or swap the, the motor wires around um, the motor signal wires round on the KISS flight controller when we need. The other thing that I forgot to mention is we need to use a voltage regulator with the DJI Air unit. The one I'm going to use is this guy which is basically an iFlight crap off it this is basically an iFlight voltage regulator rated for 6s and this will convert the 6s voltage from the ESC into either 5 or 12 volts and it basically on the corner here there's a little two blobs of solder that you need to bridge i.e. floor them together to make it output 12 volts and I've just again Put some conformal coating on it just to give it a bit of weather protection and I've attached four wires and basically on this guy you get your voltage in 36 volts and ground and then ground and voltage out 
and I've done mine in black simply because whenever I wire myself I just prefer all black wiring generally speaking your your uh, voltage wire would be red so at this stage of a build really what I'm doing is just feeling my way around it and making sure I don't back myself into a corner and the thing I like about this frame is because we've got this sort of central spine the flight controller sort of sits above this bottom plate and it leaves us a space underneath the ESC on both sides and I'm going to use that space to mount my voltage regulator so it will basically sit like so beneath the ESC out of the way and then that means that I can use a very short wire just to pick up my voltage here without traipsing wires all the way around the build and at the same time I need to decide before I go any further what side of size of capacitor I'm going to be using and the capacitors I'm going to be using are Panasonic FM capacitors and this one is a, the big one is a 50 volt 680 UF and that should give me all the capacitance that I need the big one will be mounted on the outside out of the way and you've got to be careful when you're buying these if you buy them off eBay or whatever quite often they're fakes um, so I bought about 50 different ones for I don't know 15 quid or so from a proper electronics company so if you're in the hobby well worth doing right so first order of events is I've just basically wrapped this little regulator with insulation tape and stuck it beneath this little lips of where we mount the flight controller with some 3M foam tape and that's going nowhere because if it tries to push up the base of the screws will stop it from doing so um, and it's not going to cause any sort of vibration or anything sat down there because I'm using all black wires what I simply do is I mark the positive by stripping back the wire and the one that isn't stripped back is the negative and in this particular case because we've got this free 30 by 30 mount that we're not using on this build all I've simply done is run the um, basically voltage in and ground which is going to be coming from the battery plus and minus on the ESC uh, all I'm going to do is sit the ESC in place and solder these thin wires to it and I'll solder the thin wires to these pads here for both this regulator and I'm also going to solder a couple on for um, basically the capacitor which will also be going in roughly the same place and then I will I will solder the battery wires which will go around that way I'll solder the battery wires over the top and that just basically means that I'm going to have a nice solid connection and I'm not going to have a little wires messily um, soldered on top of my main connections I've also just to be triple cautious put a little bit of insulation tape either side of this plate here and the reason for that is while I've been really careful to make sure that this guy isn't going to touch the carbon plates these bits here are very close to the carbon and just in case we sort of have a bad crash and this thing gets knocked out of line I don't want it sort of connecting with the bare edge of this carbon here so again not really necessary but for the sake of one second of cutting a little bit of insulation tape it's just a bit of peace of mind all right xd60 is soldered on left myself enough slack that i can comfortably wrap around and attach to my battery i've just added a couple of m3 nuts nylon nuts just to keep the esc roughly in place and i've attached two wires for my capacitor and again I'm basically just going to mark off the positive by stripping the end and that way later in the build if I can't easily see which one's which I can just refer to the stripped end and I know exactly where I am so we've got the regulator 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 in um, the ESC is in and at this stage we may as well get the motor wires 
roughly shortened up to where we want them. So again, we're not going to arse around and make these wonderfully perfect. We want always a bit of slack with motor wires and it's better to have more slack than not enough, providing you're not silly with it. So we're just going to get them roughly in place. And I like, you tend to find that ESCs are designed so that the motor pads are sort of on the outside of each side. And I like the way this frame sort of forces us to, or with the DJI unit, it sort of forces us to put the ESC the different way around. Because once we get these wires inside the body and we get the arm covers on we'll have to be really really unlucky to get a wire yanked out of place by a twig or a bush or whatever I'm invariably gonna hit and again I'm not I'm not being particularly careful here I just want them to stop flapping around and annoying me and one's already done and that was the wire that I used and I'm going to use to attach the bigger capacitor um, because this 20 gauge wire that motors come with um, is really good to pretty perfect to use for attaching your capacitors with so always uh, always keep it so we've got this guy in place now we know roughly where we're going uh, the next stage is really going to be to solder these motor wires on get the DJI unit installed in place so we can see what sort of space we've got to play with and then we'll basically build up and outwards from there I dropped the air unit in uh, in its cradle and I just took the wire underneath and up through the other side and temporarily I've just looped this um, cable, camera cable, beneath these two points here. When I solder the wires in, I'll lift it on, out of the way, solder the wires on, and then loop it back under there. And the reason why I do that is I want to be able to take out this DJI cable and unit if I have um, an issue. Uh, the one thing to mention is that I foolishly ordered this frame without reading the blurb and my one was the analog version so it came with uh, longer bolts here and obviously an additional two standoffs which you would use here for an analog system um, so basically all I've done is quickly cut those bolts down to size and used M3 uh, self-locking nylock nuts um, as per the DJI version of this frame and then you can see that the air unit cradle has little cutouts which basically just allow this TPU mount which this one is printed by yours truly but obviously you can download the files and print them yourself or um, or get them from Halo IC and you'll see that it basically just sandwiches between the two and the kind of good thing about the DJI unit is it's an absolute solid thing because it's in this sort of aluminium giant heat sink and it's got ribs in it to heat to uh, increase the surface area when the top plate goes on it kind of sandwiches against um, the TPU at the top here so unless we're in the world's worst crash and we only get an impact a really direct impact on one spot I can't really see us ever having an issue with missing these two um, standoffs and I haven't certainly had so for as my uh, capacitor gets stuck in my motor um, so what I need to do next is just basically power the DJI air unit and you'll notice if you've got the DJI air unit that it comes with a cable and I've taken out the yellow and orange wires and the reason for that is I'm not going to be using the receiver built into this guy. I'm going to be using Crossfire. So the only wires that I need are the red, which is positive, the black, which is negative, and then the white and grey, which are TX and RX, or RX and TX. I can never remember which way around they, um, they actually go. 
So all I'm going to do is connect the positive of the regulator, which is stripped off here, to the red wire and the negative to the black wire, and obviously shorten this cable down a little bit. And this ESC gives us a nice bit of space here, actually, so we don't have to worry about this uh, trailing cable. And I haven't connected the camera yet or screwed it in. I'm just sitting it there in place. So it's already coming together and looking like um, a quad. So once I've wired this guy in, I will leave myself a little bit of slack and then solder the motor wires on and then we'll be on our way. I've skipped forward a little bit. Um, and what I've done is I've basically soldered the motor wires on. Doesn't matter which order you solder them on at this stage. I've then basically taken the positive and negative wire from the regulator, which are outputting 12 volt volts, and I've attached them to the red and black wire from the DJI air unit. So the air unit is now getting 12 volts via, obviously it's connected at the back. I've left the grey and white wires because they're going to be giving us MSP which will allow us to see the um, on-screen display voltage etc. So that is the ESC pretty much up and running and these are the two wires. Again I've stripped off the positive so I know which one it is. If you want obviously you can use black and red wire but I prefer all black as I've said and obviously they're going to be the positive and negative which are going to be attached to the ESC. So basically all I'm going to do is just cut, or in this case I've cut a piece of heat shrink. I want it about so big so when I heat it up and mount it obviously it'll mostly cover the pins. And the rule of thumb with capacitors are you can or you should shorten these pins as much as you can get away with because they're not particularly great at doing the job so I'm going to shorten them sort of about so long obviously on a capacitor the solid line along the side as he drops it is basically a negative. Capacitors soldered on and as I said all I'm going to do is basically zip tie it to there and just before I do that I'm going to heat shrink over the top of it and if you haven't got a heat gun which is what I'll be using you can use a hairdryer or a lighter it doesn't really matter however because I have it and you don't need to do this but because I have it I'm just going to slap a little bit of conformal coating over that capacitor and you don't need to do this, it's not really going to do much at all to be honest with you but again it's just a bit of protection for those naked wires and because it's sort of almost like glue in a way it'll just help us a little bit. It doesn't really matter if water gets on there, you're not really going to cause any damage but we'll do it properly and because it's really nice and simple we can use our heat gun to dry it off a little bit at the same time. So that is that, and we'll just twist it under, make sure we're obviously not touching anything. And again, as I said, I'm just going to zip tie it. Just going to zip tie it under here. Make sure I don't catch anything else while I'm doing it. <clears throat> and we just basically want to drop it in. there like so doesn't have to be pretty again we're making a quad that's going to be smashed and bashed against trees etc and the capacitors are only a couple of pence or less than a quid so we don't really need to worry about if we bash it just stick another one on 
and we'll cut this short here and there we are we're good so at this stage I'm going to get my multimeter out and if you're going to build quads you should have a multimeter it's one of those things that you can't really get away with it will save your life a million times and the one I'm using is about five years old it was about 10 or 15 quid from Amazon it doesn't have to be fancy so I'm going to put it in continuity setting she's like two little Christmas trees and this will just tell me if I've got an obvious short. So I've got no beeps, which is good. That short beep was basically just the ESC's charge and capacitor charging up. So we're good. We're good. Nothing is touching. And at this stage, what I like to do is power up the ESC. Because if you've got a dodgy ESC that's going to smoke, I'd rather do it at this stage before I connect anything else. And although this is going to be, although this is a 6S build, at this stage I'm just using an old 4S battery. And I've also got a smoke stopper. You can buy these for a few quid from hobby shops. I'm just going to plug that in there and we get the magic chimes and the fact that that light has stayed on means that we should be good so let's take this off right so we're good now the one issue when you're using a BL Heli 32 ESC and not a KISS or a FETEC one is that when you were, if you were building beta flight you can use the flight controller to um, as basically a pass through and you can flash your ESCs etc via uh, after plugging into um, to beta flight etc but we can't do that with KISS because it won't pass through to BL Heli Suite so we don't have a way to flash this ESC now, if you're buying a, an ESC that's relatively new on the market, like that one for argument's sake, you can probably get away with not bothering, but it's always a good idea just to go into BL Heli 32, make sure your ESC is running on the latest firmware, and just make sure there aren't any silly settings um, set up there. And the way I will do this is to basically use a Donner board, which is the sort of an irritating part of building KISS when you're not using a KISS or a FETIC flight controller. So all I'm going to do is take a beta flight flight controller, plug it in to the ESC, and then use uh, basically beta flight to pass through to BL Heli, flash the ESC, make sure everything's set up correctly. I don't tend to mess around with um, BL Heli 32 settings. Um, I will change it from 48K down to 24K because 48K can cause issues on 6S. So this is my rather horrific donor board. And as you can see, this guy has been used as a donor millions of times and it kind of just is my little play thing. I'm kind of waiting for it to die, but it hasn't done so far. And this is a, one of those really old Matek, I don't even know what it was called, one of those ones that had um, an SPI receiver built into it. Um, basically, all I've done is taken a really nasty 8-pin connector, which is what the Speedex ESC uses. And this is one of those with plastic wires that melt um, so it'll be never used and I've simply just wired this connector to the flight controller so I've got positive negative and then I need four motor wires which are going to signals one to four and it doesn't matter which order the signal wires are going to the only thing that matters is you've got four of them attached to four signal wires and the little card that it comes with so obviously the reverse of the way that this guy is in. So we basically just need to look at it here. And that's basically the pinout that I've used on 
this guy and the two spare wires are the ones we're not going to be using in this particular case so all i'm going to do is plug this guy into its corresponding connector and again because this is a really nasty old board just make sure nothing is obviously shorting and obviously take a little bit more care and attention than I'm doing here I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to things like this and then we want to get our multimeter again again let's just check and make sure we haven't got any obvious shorts And we'll do the same on here. And that's all good. Right, so I've connected to, I've opened up Betaflight, should I say. I'm just going to make sure the COM port is active, and it is. Excuse me, that's my batteries beeping in the background. I'm then going to open up BL Heli Suite. And we're using BL Heli 32. I'm going to connect and then I'm going to plug in the same 4S battery. And I'm going to read setup. And that brings up obviously the fact that it's a Speedex GS40. Turn off that charger. And basically we can see we're running version 32.6 and the latest one I know is 32.7. So we're just gonna click flash BL Heli. It's gonna bring up the latest one. We're gonna click accept and it'll flash the first ESC and then the second ESC and then the third and so on. Right, so they're all flashed, and we don't really need to worry about any of these things. You'll notice that motor degree timing is on 16. A good setting for freestyle would probably be around sort of 22, 23 degrees. But as I said, I'm going auto. And the other one you can choose to mess around with is <clears throat> PWM frequency. Again, common wisdom is run at 48 kilohertz. But, as I said, common wisdom is generally for 4S ESCs, uh, sorry, 4S batteries. And on 6S, as I said, you can have um, slight issues running 48K. So it's entirely down to you which of those setups you use. But either way, just click right setup. It will confirm everything is hunky-dory. And that is all I'm going to do. So I'm just going to disconnect. And then unplug, and that's BL Heli done.